Hello, all of you very gloriously wonderful people. This is the Anis S80RR, and I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. You can vote for the vehicles that you want to see featured in upcoming Will It Off-Road videos by clicking on the link in the description down below. And of course, in the description down below, you can also play Will It Off-Road Bingo. And Uphall, a pale, sorry, says it would be interesting to see you do the Zeruso and the Krieger. And you know what's really interesting about that? is the uh, video that you commented on the very same day that that went live i worked out a release schedule for will it off road it's like the first time i've ever done this to try to figure out a balance between uh the hidden vehicles current vehicles as well as having voted for vehicles so you'll see the krieger i can promise you this on september 16th that's right just a couple weeks away and then you'll see the zaruso on october the 7th uh, in between those, there will be two vi uh, videos that feature vehicles that were voted for. One that was recorded way back in July, but then got preempted by the DLC. Um, and another that we just recorded this past weekend, um, featuring uh, some really fun times. Like, some hilarious stuff happened today. Um, overall, what I'm looking at is on, for the hidden vehicles, or the unreleased vehicles, whatever you want to call them, uh, on September 9th, I'll do the uh, Locust and Zion. September 16th will be the Krieger and the Jugular. On the 7th of October will be the Dynasty or Dynasty and Zeruso. And then wrapping it up on the 21st will be the Gasser and the Rocket, Rampant Rocket. So, uh, yeah, watch for all of those videos coming. And of course, any dates I didn't mention, those will feature uh, videos where the community has voted for what I am so make sure you start getting those votes in I haven't had any in a few days actually in about a week and a half um, mainly I think a lot of that is people will see me doing all the DLC cars and they're like he's not going to do this but they're coming and they're coming soon um, in fact this weekend we will be recording cars that you guys vote for and, and every weekend from now on uh, there will be a couple weekends where if a car had just come out the previous Thursday, I'll record that one car. So there's going to be some weird combinations upcoming where uh, the video features one car recorded in GTA Online with the whole uh, supporting cast behind me. And another one where it'll be just me single player with PC mods to spawn in a vehicle that's still unreleased. So... I've got all the unreleased vehicles recorded, but if I can get online footage, I'll do it. But we haven't talked much about the car we're currently looking at, and my gosh, it's climbing right up this mountain. Though kind of overshot that last little turn and almost got hit by another Anis, the LG. But it, once we got straightened out, climbed right on up, and got a hiker and a time of 2 minutes 50 seconds. So we'll get off-road. Yeah, but it's a supercar, um, and it's a race car, supercar at that. So, uh, probably not the best choice if you're going to go off-roading, but at least it did uh, get up there under three minutes. And, of course, we're all lined up at the top of Mount Chiliad, ready to go back down. I think a couple of them just wind up staying because it took them a little while to uh, get up here. <laughs> so, uh, I think they decided they wanted to stay. And, of course, Commander didn't want to get stuck in the traffic jam. So he backed off the top and then gets in my way, so I honked at him to get him out of the way. Um, I was really surprised. Honestly, going into the SADRR, I was kind of expecting it to be a nightmare. Uh, for reasons like you just saw, it's a lightweight car. Um, I didn't think it would really handle the bumps very well. Going up, it did. Going down, though, definitely, as you can see, already running into a couple issues. Almost ran off when I hit that first group of hikers. And then that second group of hikers, I was bouncing. But look at that. On racing slicks, that car just climbed an almost vertical, sheer, slippery rock. So whatever. I just goes to show you never know what uh, the cars are going to do in this game. It, some of them just do unbelievably well on the mountain that you think would have no hope. And then others that you think, man, this is going to be great turn into a big disappointment. By the way, I have to issue a correction um, to what I said last week um, when I was driving the Hellfire up the mountain. I mentioned that no muscle car has broken the three-minute mark, and that is incorrect. The 
uh, what was it? The Gauntlet Classic broke that three minute mark, which is funny that the Hellfire did. Um, and in a video that will be upcoming soon, you'll see another Monster Car break that three minute mark. So uh, have a couple that are working their way into rotation. Uh, so finally, Muscle Car has some representation in the three minute club. So that's kind of good. Uh, struggling more with my, my fellow drivers today, though, it would seem, than I am with the actual cars, though. Ooh, I thought I was going to go on over there because that was a lot of speed. Once again, Commander flying past me. And what I have to admit is a pretty good looking station wagon. I like the way he has it painted. I think it looks fantastic. Is it the Stratum? Yeah, the Stratum. I went blank on the name. Going all over the place because of the way this thing bounces around on really big bumps. I mean, it's good in the city and stuff like that, and in, even in, out in the country. But here off road, uh, it's just too it's too light, and so it bounces up into the air. It has nothing to do with any weird thing in the car. But now that we're back down on asphalt, should do a little bit better. Of course, still have to watch my speed here because this car can pile on the speed quite a bit and I don't want to fail to navigate this narrow road, but we are down two minutes, 52 seconds. So let's go back to the top of Mount Chiliad as we see Commander go flying over. Uh, a sunset damage descent today because uh, we got a late start on this car because just as we got ready to start recording, uh, which we do in game around 7 a.m., uh, which is why the thumbnails are always a little bit darkish. But uh, that gives us plenty of time to get up the mountain, back down, and back up, and back down. Um, but it started raining just as we got ready to start. And I try to avoid doing roll it off road in the rain if I can help it. And I also try to avoid doing it in the dark. Because uh, it makes it really hard to see what's going on. About the only time I'll record a car for roll it off road in the dark is during the very limited time we get with snow in gta online for my roll it off road in the snow videos which i still have one of those recorded and edited and everything that i never uploaded last winter I, I may throw one of those into the mix like a month before the snow comes out just to, to mess with people so we're in a bit of a predicament here with the sadrr um my spoiler is stuck on this boulder behind me and now partially also stuck on Fat Cube's Banshee. Um, no amount of rocking was able to get that thing off of there. Like I tried for a long time. So we called it the DNF. Um, no real damage to look at because we didn't go all the way down. So I just figured I'd give you a nice little first person shot of the car stuck. And it brings us to our next vehicle, the Progen Emerus. This is a car that when it first came out, I, I don't know, even before it came out, I wasn't all that excited about. I think it's just kind of generic, and I stand by that, but I've kind of grown to like it. But of course, Steph was waiting for the Volker Nebula Turbo, and turns around it was worth the wait, uh, even though you didn't attempt it yourself. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. As you saw in the video last week, it was kind of a nightmare. Um... Kind of not fun at all. And already running into some not fun things with the Emirates, which surprised me a little bit. I thought this one would do... I thought this would be the easy car and the S80 would be the one that would be the absolute nightmare handful. But it's kind of the only way around so far. Not that the Emirates does poorly by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely a bit more of a struggle with this car. I don't know. The longer I own this car, the more I like it. But I still, I don't know. I just think there could have been more to it. I, I really do. I, I don't know. Get scissor doors, something. It just, it kind of blends in to just the big group of supercars that we have in GTA Online. Um, and there's just, I don't know. To me, there's nothing special about it that makes it really stand apart. But, I don't know, that's also true of a lot of supercars in the real world. Uh, a lot of them, especially anymore, you know, they, it's strange because they all just kind of look alike. It's like sedans from the 70s. You know, the Ford Chryslers and GMs all look exactly the same. Um, and now we're starting to get to that with supercars. So, 
hopefully Rockstar can improve upon that because sometimes they're better at designing a car than uh, the real world manufacturers. Case in point, look at the back end of the Coquette, compare it to the Coquette, or the Corvette that came out around the same time as GTA did, and you can see Rockstar knows how to design the rear end of a Corvette better than Chevrolet themselves. But the MRS is doing all right as far as its climb time. We can see the top, um, and we're just now at the two minute mark. So we should clock in just under three. Sadly, no hikers up here to take down. Always disappointing when that happens, but what are you gonna do? They're not there, they're not there. Maybe they're finally learning to stay off the mountain. They've heard that the Vainglorious has claimed that mountain, and that if you're on it, you might get squished. Pushing our way right on up, though. Dealing with a bit of wheel spin. But it's doing okay. Coming around to the last little climb, and better in a way than the last car, but not better in a way because the back end slung around on me. So I didn't quite miss the turn this time, but I did also didn't get the grip that I needed. But we are finally up two minutes, 53 seconds. So will it off road? Yeah, it will. But again, Supercars probably shouldn't be your first choice for off-roading. By the way, uh, the results today make the SADRR the 16th place in Supers and the Emirates 20th place. Um, the S80 actually was wedged between the Fister 811 and the Pegasi Tesseract by literally just a few tenths of a second to either direction. Um, they were all right there in around that same 250 and a half barn. So it's kind of interesting to see how close we have three supercars. Just boom, boom, boom. Of course, it also makes the SADRR the 40, uh, 44th overall. I wrote 40, 40 or third on my note card. 44 RD. Yeah, I shouldn't fill out my note cards at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, it, it, made, it makes the Emirates 49th overall out of 200 and a lot. I, I forget the exact numbers, but it's a lot. If this is Willard Off-Road 116 that I'm recording, and that's at least 232 vehicles. But you know, it's more than that, because the first few videos I did three vehicles, and there's one or two where uh, one vehicle took so long. There was only one, so... But it, it's 230-ish somewhere. So, yeah. Anyway... Amaris is doing fine going back down the mountain so far. Not too many issues that we've seen. We've seen a couple little hiccups here. But it doesn't really land very nicely. I don't know. It, it seems to... Yeah, see? There you go. It, it doesn't have the most poise and grace when it lands. Uh, but then again, do we really expect the supercar to be able to absorb that kind of uh, jump? No, not really. Spun out of control almost up and over the rock. Managed to save it at the last second there, or maybe it was just I didn't have that much room to go over in the first place, and I'm taking too much credit for it. It's one of those. By the way, you can hear the dialogue and see an extended version of Vivid Off Road Plus. Know the results one day early by being a Vainglorious supporter. And no, that's not some weird type of jockstrap. That is. People who are either uh, patrons over on my Patreon page, Twitch subscribers, or YouTube members. There are links in the description down below to two out of three of those for Patreon and for Twitch. And of course, right here on YouTube, you just click join. Uh, all of those, if you are on our Discord server, you get a role for the Bangalore's supporter room, and you can get access to those videos. We're down in two minutes, 30 seconds, Commander rolls his SUV numerous times. Now it's my turn to roll a supercar, most likely. I don't know, supercars love to go around with their roof. Um, at this point, somebody was wanting to see if they could drop their car on me as I went under them. I can't remember who it was, but yeah, I kind of missed a little bit. It's, it's down there below me. Um, I think it's a Chibarek, though I could be wrong. We'll find out once we get a little closer. Still can't quite tell. Uh, what is that? No, it's a... An SUV. Is that Command? Oh, Commander did that. Commander tried to drop his car on me. There we go. Yes, indeed. That is a baller. Um, and since it has no driver, it's kind of in my way, but look at it keep going. 
There goes Rocket and his nearly identical baller. Yeah, can't tell which one's which, except one doesn't have a driver, I guess that's kind of cool way. But uh, look at it, it's still going! <laughs> it's, it's not giving up. It's kind of surprising. I guess it's getting helped out a little bit by all the other cars hitting it. But uh, yeah, it was it was still going there. I think Commander said it was just so beat up, he didn't want to try to drive it back to the mountain. So he has Cargo Bob out instead. I really need to buy a Cargo Bob. Whoa! Shaq Jr. just got involved in a kickflip there. Got so flying. Holy cow. This is why I love having people along. By the way, if you play on PC, we record on Sunday afternoons uh, every week. You are more than welcome to join us. All you have to do is be in the big glorious crew. Um, and when we record, you need to have it set as active because we use crew lobbies. Um, you know, other six days of the week, whatever crew you want to have is active. That's fine, so be it. I'm not one of those, oh, join my crew and nobody else types. Not at all. But you're welcome to be in the World Off-Road videos. You're welcome to hang out with us every evening, like literally seven days a week. We do daily objectives together, uh, four or five of us, sometimes even more. Um, and we all use our Discord server, so the link to that is in the description down below. And you're welcome, if you play on PC, to join us. We also have people on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. But we are down 2 minutes, 5, almost 6 seconds, so let's take a look as he slams the door shut at the damage on the MRS. Most of the windows of one headlight are missing. The doors won't close, and there is slight body damage. There you can see the damage to the vehicles. Uh, yeah, some, some squish, some not, but hey. That's going to do it for this week's Will It Off-Road. Again, don't forget to go vote for the vehicles that you want to see featured in upcoming Will It Off-Road videos because we will be recording those uh, this weekend. Granted, that video won't go live till like October, but still, we are going to be recording the vehicles that you vote for going forward. But until next time, I'm Brandon. Reminding you to stay vainglorious.